At Planet Networks, our high-speed fiber is designed to be fast. Up to 300 times faster than cable and up to 500 times faster than DSL. As fast as 10,000 megabits per second up and down if you speak NERD. We're talking cheetah, bullet train, lightning strike, hummingbird, race car kind of fast. Planet Networks. So fast, it's worth the wait. Me in this game, we got big plans. Overcoming every challenge. And right now, that means getting by him. It means putting in the time to get faster, to get stronger. One thing is for certain, I will never be outworked. there for them we're here for you get back the life you love go ahead take a deep breath oh nice huh that's some clean fresh air at the perfect temperature that is good who installed the system ics they're the leaders in hvac they make the duct work at their own factory so we even save some money that's impressive you recommend them <laughs> it's ics for hvac i see why Hey, Lorraine, go get a big plastic bag. Take some air home with you. Choosing a college is a big, big, big deal. But I know I started right because CCMs are the top 2% of community colleges in the nation. And at County College of Morris, I get to choose over 100 programs. Whether you're just out of high school, like me, exploring career options, like me, or seeking lifelong learning, like me, make CCM your choice. Like me, go big and visit ccm.edu and aspire to be you. I was born fast. Parisi made me faster. I thought I could jump. Parisi brought me to new heights. I wasn't always quick. Parisi made me lightning fast. Strength was never my strength. Parisi changed all that. WIS gives me the freedom to be entrepreneurial, innovative. I feel supported to bring 100% of myself and my personality to work each and every day. I'm the CEO of WIS Family Office. I have two amazing children. I'm the daughter of French and Italian immigrants. Above all, I'm someone who derives strength and confidence from my ability to connect with others, and I strive to make a difference in their lives. I 
enjoy helping nonprofits achieve their goals and really accomplish their mission, namely by nurturing my relationship with them, their staff, their donors, their volunteers, and their board members. I think the key to being trusted is really transparency. What I've seen time and time again is that when you give anything the right conditions, the support, the autonomy, trust, your full attention, it will thrive. This is as true for my clients and for my colleagues as it is for myself here at Bliss. Hi, I'm Rob Guswell. As the branch manager of our Persephone location for North Point Bank, I can tell you emphatically that our customers continue to sing our praises. Our community values us as much as we at North Point value our team. Our goal is to always exceed our clients' expectations. If you're just zipping through life and need a helping hand with any of your home buying decisions, please give us a call today. set and TJ Santeda has it for the Vikings. Santeda brings it right past two defenders. Look at the speed in the open eye. Santeda, great stick handling, great shot. Here's Carlotti, oh! in the end zone, it is caught. Charge, good for the pass, here's a shot, right in front, score. And that is a base hit, the run will score. And freshman, pull a check, gets the strike. Anthony Grosso is going to make sure that the Wolfpack fans go home happy. Grosso for three. He got it! Ah Nick Carlson here at Frederick Douglass Field on the campus of Rutgers University, Newark, with two very good teams playing today, the Morris Elite Soccer Club, as well as the Cedar Stars, two teams that they actually drew in the last game that they played back on May 31st. So just about a week and a half ago or so, these two teams met back in Cedar. They did end up drawing 0-0 game, a very hard fought game in the first game all season long where Morris Elite did not put up a goal. We've been seeing it for the majority of the season, whether it was Melina Rabimbis, Claire Manning, Henna Andekin as well. All of them have gotten involved in the scoring. Morris Elite also coming off of their Long Island Rough Riders game, a team that had led the majority of the division last year. And Morris Elite with a huge win over them last time, around this time this season. They were able to win the whole entire division. Now they just lost 2-1 to one back on June 4th. So they have their first loss of the season, but regardless, we're going to take a quick step off here and send this to the National Anthem. See you right back here on more Sussex Sports.
here, Frederick Douglass Field, Morris Sussex Sports and Cedar Stars. A team in Cedar Stars who has not lost a game on the season. Right now sit at 4-0-1. Their lone draw was with Morris Lee back about a week and a half ago. Morris Lee coming off their first loss of the season, a 3-1-1 record. A team that had also won the division last year. Now they sit at 3-1-1 coming off of the Long Island Rough Riders. Very difficult team to face, specifically on the road. End up losing that one 2-1. Another key factor is that Melina Rabimbis, the leading scorer, was not at that game. Does currently have six goals on the season to go along with being tied in fourth place in terms of goals scored. Claire Manning as well is up there too. She had a hat trick in the game against Westchester to go along with five goals on the season. She's tied for fifth. So two of the top scorers on the team in Rabimbis and Claire Manning are among the top five in general in terms of the USLW. But here for Morris Elite Day, a lot of the youth kids out and about for this one, as well as the USL2 taking place as well against NJ Coppa at about 6.30 or so after this one. But just to go through some of the starting lineups for this one, you've got Morris Elite and Arden Lembrick in net. She's been in the majority of the games, if not all of them. Lembrick has only allowed two goals through five games, both of which came against the Long Island Rough Riders and then Manhattan as well, so actually make it three. But you've got Arden Lembrick out of Mount St. Mary. Then you got Jessica Corman out of Loyola and Juliana Ryan, the lone girl to score a goal against the Rough Riders, making it a two to one game. And then Elizabeth Gallagher out of Loyola, Maryland, Bridget Dujitz, Claire Manning, Olivia Redden, Sophia Cavalier, Sam Kroger, Courtney Root, and then the standout Melina Rabimbis out of Rutgers Prep also has committed to UNC. UNC right now, girls soccer sits at the top in the country right now, number one projected rankings. And then Melina Rabimbis as well comes in as the number three prospect in all of the country, and she's playing here for the Morris Elite. So definitely a lot of key players to look at here. You also got Henna Andekin on the bench as well, has scored a handful of goals on the season, had two goals the last time that we were here at home. A little bit of a road trip here for the Morris Elite. I spent the last two weeks or so traveling good per portion of that was at Cedar Stars, Long Island, and then ended up at Westchester as well. Not in that order, but just off those last three games is what they've played. A six-year game against Westchester. They drew against Cedar, and then two to one against Long Island, but they're gonna play Cedar, and then go to Paisley Athletic, and then the Rough Riders are coming back here on June 17th, something to put in your calendars. Definitely something to look at, as that's a Saturday doubleheader game, but we're underway here in this one. 10 seconds through and already in the offensive zone are Morris Elite. Some of the girls to look at, you got Abby Callis in and in the net for Cedar. Then you got Kathleen Heenan as well, Gabby Coolidge, Riley Mullen, Heather McNabb, Madison Krakauer, Lauren Bruno, Lily Frolic, Clara Ford who leads the team, four goals on the season, is tied for sixth amongst all of the USLW. Then you got Margot Ridgeway and Marissa Tava who at one point in the later stages of last season and then early this season was on the Morris Elite, made the transfer over to Cedar, but now in the defensive zone. Sets one up, Root lost it for a sec, now a scramble and Lembrick lost it and now punches it over. So a little bit of an early scramble as Lembrick looks to have done something potentially to her left foot. As she's down on the ground holding it, but regardless on the other side, punches one back up and Rabimbus collects. So a minute and seven through. Two teams at the top of the division. You've got the Rough Riders at one, Cedar at two, and then the Morris Elite at three. Everybody else kind of trails behind. AC Connecticut there as well. FA Euro New York is now a trailer moving with it. Cedar inside the box. McNabb has it, fires one in Lembrick off her foot. So the first good opportunity coming here from Cedar Stars as we have a corner kick coming off of Lembrick. Haven't seen a corner kick be scored off of the Morris Elite. Morris Elite's had their handful of corner kicks that they've been able to be successful on. We haven't seen, at least defensively, anyone been able to score on them. But a ball sent up and in, and Rabimbus punches it away. Manning coming over all the way from the midline, not able to collect it, and Cedar's going to do something with it. Now you got Heenan. 
Working on the far side. 2-12 through. Cedar's been in control through the first two, still early. As now inside of the box, a ball that flutters out of bounds. No signal yet if it's going to be a corner, and everyone looks to set up inside the box. So a corner kick coming once again for Cedar. This will be the second one in two and a half minutes. Abby Cowles has really two and a half through, not had to really face anything besides that opening kickoff. Lembrick's been under the most pressure, arguably, that we've seen through this whole entire season as a ball headed and still up and finally punched away. Now still in the box and Lembrick comes up with the snag. So she gets her first save as Rabimbis will collect and set up for Manning. Manning with Rabimbis to her left. She's also got Jujits to her right. Manning a couple moves, now finds Dujits on the near side, sets up a crosser up and in, and Kroger was the nearest defender, but just punched away outside the box, 3-10 through. Lembrick out of Mount St. Mary's, as I had talked about earlier, only allowed three goals all season long, as she sets another one up, and Lembrick's gonna watch it go. Had Clara Ford, who does have four goals on the season, just off of her left eye, but Clara Ford always dangerous in that attacking position. Also have Krakauer to her left. She was set up just a couple of minutes ago as well as now Root punches one up and over. But Cedar's doing a very good job of pressing as once again they take it. Now moving quickly with it. Ford sends one up and tries to cross it. Ford tries to get another foot on it and Kroger just ends up with it. Now trying to set up Cedar back with it. Morris Elite can't really seem to get anything going at least crossing the midline, as now stepping in front of one, Kroger up with it. Now tries to find Manning, cutting up ahead and takes it off her right foot. Ridgeway was the nearest defender, but Manning just trying to get something going. Cavalier over to the other side, Ryan. Ryan, who had the lone goal against the Rough Riders, tries to set up Ducic, she's wide open on the box, punches one off her foot weird, and Manning can't collect it. Has four and a half through. It's felt like it's been all Cedar in this one, still early. Only 440 through. Has Krakauer. Sets up Ford and it's an offsides. If anything, it looks like Redden and Root would have been there, but everyone else takes a couple of steps back in Lembrick. He's just going to punch one up. So would it be Olivia Redden, the one to do the free kick? Scott Ryan to her right, Rabimis in front of her, as well as Cavalier. She goes all the way towards the opposite side, towards where the majority of the youth kids are sitting. USL Academy tent set up as well. USL 2 coming later tonight. Playing at 6.30 against NJ Coppa. Now Cedar up ahead with Mullen. Lost one off of her foot. Now trying to set up Rabimbus. Rabimbus eyes it down. Now runs up in front and sets up Ryan. As now Ryan will just play it back. Manning plays one off her foot. Weird. Dujic tries to collect it. Dujic in a lot of the AC Connecticut game. The majority of the balls that were sent her way. Good opportunity. Just too far out of her reach. We saw Claire Manning come off the bench in the first game and score, and since then, she scored in almost all of the games that she's played in. It's now on the far side, McNabb, trying to work around inside the box. Now one pushed up through, Ryan heads it, and it goes out of bounds, so a corner kick coming on the nearer side. It's gonna be Cedar Star's third corner kick, only six minutes through. So everybody winds up inside. You gotta be thinking, third time's the charm is the saying. As now inside the box, headed up and back over towards out of bounds. They're gonna say it was last off Cedar, so Lembrick's gonna go collect it. We're gonna have a free kick coming here from Lembrick. Lembrick has been helped out the majority of the time from the phenomenal defenders in front of her. Specifically, Juliana Ryan, who's started the last game as well, had a goal. Jessica Corman, too. Elizabeth Gallagher. 
Olivia Redden, the standout in the center. Now she puts one up towards Manning, but just a little too far out of her reach. Once again, Cedar Stars doing everything they can to not allow Morris Lee to even cross mid-line. As Root pushes one up at seven and a half through, Gallagher gets her first touch. It's Rabimbus now with it. Tries to set up a look for Manny. Manning's got a look. Has two in front of her though. Now looks to her right. Bobbles it a little bit and finally gets taken away. Kroger gets a foot on it now. Morris Elite still takes possession and Manning now working in. Rabimbus just a little too far out of her reach. A good setup from Morris Leet, the first good opportunity they've had. As Ryan lost it out of bounds last off crack hour. Kroger out of Rutgers. She had talked about in some player Q and A's. One of her favorite moments was being in the Rutgers final four. Scored countless goals with Rutgers. Now, Summer League with Moore Salit. As Rabimis gets a foot on it, now Manning up ahead with it, moving with the right. Steps inside the box, fires a shot just too far left. Now trying to keep it in once again, but whistles blow. Over on that far side, Gallagher might have got a foot on it, but they're gonna say she was too far out, so. Three good opportunities coming off of corner kicks you could Maybe argue a couple more that came from Cedar, but two really good ones from Morris Elite. Manning just a little too far pushed out right. Had a bunch of good opportunities, but both of them have come from Claire Manning. Just waiting for Dujits and Rabimbus to get involved as well as Kroger pushes one back for Red. If you look at Morris Elite, and what they've been able to do on the season, at least offensively. Defensively, they've been phenomenal as well. But 18 to three, they have outscored their opponents. The only problem is that they're playing a Cedar Stars team who has outscored their opponents 18 to two. As 9.35 through, almost at that 10 minute mark as a ball that goes off of Dujits. And out of bounds. Nearest player was Madison Krakauer, but not sure if it was intended for her or not, but now as that ball heads towards Krakauer, Rabimbus plays it off of her chest, now looking for somewhere to go. Rabimbus with a bunch of moves, now looking for Dujets, Manning up ahead, Rabimbus ends up back with it. Now up ahead to Dujets, no offsides call, has people to her left, Dujets working around, now fires a shot and just misses left. Dujets, a great opportunity. Cowles gets away with one there as the ball just a little too far left. So officially 10 through. Three good opportunities from Cedar, now three from the Morris Elite. Three of which have come in the last two minutes or so. Cedar, through those first seven minutes, looked pretty dominant. Cowles wasn't under a lot of duress. It was Lembrick for the first seven, now Cowles. Has a ball set up and out of bounds. Is as you can see on the broadcast, a lot of fans here for Morris Elite Day. A lot of the youth kids as whistle blows, a penalty coming. Urbimbus took a little bit of a fall. Expect a lot more tonight. Some of the youth girls coming to support the USLW expect some of the littler guys to come for the USL2 boys game tonight at 6.30. Stay tuned for that as Redden fires one up, floating up, and Cowles just catches it above her head for her first save of the day. 11.31 through. Cowles boots one all the way up towards the midline. The Rough Riders are a team to look at, as well as Cedar and then Morris. So you've got the top three teams in the division, and two of which are playing right now. Morris Elite does have one loss on the season. If Cedar were to lose today, it would be their first loss. As now a ball set up just a little too far out of the reach of Clara Ford. Lembrick just takes it and then punches one up. 
as Manning. Plays one off of her foot, now finds Ryan, and a nice slide tackle there by Krakauer. Just pushed it out of bounds. It was actually Bruno who did the slide tackle. You've got the forwards of Gallagher, Dujits, Manning, Rabimbus, all manning that front line. Specifically on the majority of the charts is Root puts one out of bounds. You've got Manning, Ducic, Rabimbus, and then Gallagher at that top four, and then Cavalier and Kroger. Kroger, who did score two goals in the home opener, the little season opener for Morris Elite. She's playing in that middle field type of role. You look at Krakauer, McNabb, and Kulich as well for Cedar. We haven't seen Kulich really touch the ball at all. Krakauer has been really all over the ball. McNabb as well. Ford has been set up and you're just waiting for that goal to come from her. She does have four goals as a ball that gets passed over to Dujic. Dujic bodying down, now moves in, spits around, fires a shot and scores. Dujic missed the one earlier. Finally gets that one on the right side. Bridget Dujic and a 1-0 game, 13-35 throw. a beautiful play in, in backing down Margot Ridgeway and then just squeezing right through and Cowell's basically point blank. Bridget Dujic just kind of put one right past her. 14 minutes through, Bridget Dujic has this game up 1-0. Basically a lot different of a game than we saw in that last game between Cedar and Morris Elite. A 0-0 game is what it was. Dujic comes over, takes a little bit of a water break and gets back out there. So Dujic, now the nearest defender as Cedar Stars will look to come back from their 1-0 deficit. Ball sent up and over and Cedar Stars who, for those first five minutes or so, look to have been dominating past that midfield line. Really not allowing Morris Lee to really control any type of possession. Now it feels like that press is working in opposite. For the Morris Elite, able to contain Cedar and really not allow them to get anywhere past that midfield line. As we're officially a third of the way through, we already have our first goal. Coming from Bridget Dujic, if you just tuned in now, Bridget Dujic, about that 13 minute mark, so you missed it by about two minutes or so. Notch the first goal. Cedar, still just working to try to get it past midcourt, midfield, excuse me, as Ryan just sends one back. So this will be the third goal on the season that the Cedar Stars have allowed. They we're 18 and two coming in, now make it 18 and three. So they're tied with the Morris lead in terms of goals for and goals against. In a league where goals for and goals against, the plus and minuses, they do matter. They stand basically the standings as now they're both tied. But if Morris Elite were to win today, you would have the 1-0 advantage. There was a draw in the last one, but you would go up 1-0. So a huge game in terms of standing wise. The Morris Elite are gonna have to play the Rough Riders here on June 17th. As Manning just pushed a little too far away from it and they'll set back up as Bruno sends one all the way back to Callis and Callis who just let up her first goal. Point blank shot from Dujits is now Redden plays one off of her chest and just kicks one up over to Kroger. Manning getting involved as well. Now Gallagher gets a foot on it and Rabimbus with it. Rabimbus with a fancy move, sets one up. Rabimbus trying to track it down now and just a little too far out as Bruno will take it and set it up back towards the far side. Now finally Cedar Stars gets their first real good attempt here. Moving towards the box. Working on Corman, fires a shot and Lembrick takes it off the bounce off her chest and collects so. 
Lemberg, we haven't really seen a ball sent her way since about that six minute mark when that third corner kick happened. Those three straight corner kicks from Cedar Stars. Since then, it's felt like it's been, for the majority of the time, all Morris Elite here. This Cavalier head one, heads one up. Now ball sent up and in Lembrick comes up and collects it on the top of the box. So the second ball we've seen sent that way. So you look at Dugits who had that goal in the beginning is now Manning up ahead with it and whistles blow. Offsides was Claire Manning. She already had five goals on the season. Could have made it six and tied Rabimbus. Rabimbus tied for fourth among all of the USLW. UNC commit third ranked player in the country out of Rutgers prep. We'll go to the number one preseason rankings women's soccer team in the country in UNC. This upcoming fall. As Cowles once again will recollect it and take it. Rabimbus showing press early, now moving over. Rabimbus really doing a lot over there. And finally, Rabimbus falls. Some strong defensive pressure there by Melina Rabimbus. And Rabimbus once again trying to get a foot on it. Gallagher now. Kroger just a little too far out of her reach. As the Stars just trying to do something past midfield. A ball set up, now over. Moving quickly with it. Krakauer takes a fall with no whistle. And a penalty shot is what it could have been, but there was no signal from the referee, so Morris Elite might have got away with one there. It's definitely Krakauer took a fall. Ryan plays one off of her knee, and now here comes Cedar Stars. Once again, set up for Forge is too far out of her reach. Now two girls connect on it with their heads. And whistles blow automatically. No signal yet on who is down. It looked like it was Gallagher, but definitely both just completely clanked heads with each other. It seemed like Cedar Stars is good as well. It was Frolich for Cedar Stars, but it does look like Gallagher is down. Trainers will go out to take a look at her. We're going to take a quick step off for Nick Carlson here with more Sussex Sports. See in about 30 or seconds or so. I was born fast. Parisi made me faster. I thought I could jump. Parisi brought me to new heights. I wasn't always quick. Parisi made me lightning fast. Strength was never my strength. Parisi changed all that. here, Frederick Douglas Field, Morris Elite, and the Cedar Stars, and in the spirit of Morris Elite Day, you can get your kids into the game with the Morris Elite 2023 summer camps, whether it's soccer, swim, as well as goaltender technical camps. They all start in just a couple of weeks. You can register today and be a part of the Morris Elite with their summer camp starting on June 26th. For more information, you can go to morriselitesoccer.com slash summer camps for more. Back underway in Gallagher, the one who took a hit. Now she seems like she's back out there. Went for a header alongside of Frolish and just combined heads, 21-48 through. As the Stars pushing one up ahead, Root the nearest defender and a ball that just flutters out of bounds, so. All the passes in those first six or seven minutes or so were connecting for the Cedar Stars. A little bit of a different story here since that 15 minute mark. 
Lembrick has really not had to face anything that crazy. Callister, on the other hand, had to face a couple. Got away with one from Dujic, but then about two minutes later, Dujic went right back at her. Kind of just fluttered one in off her right side. Morsely have showed press. Dujic, the nearest one to it, as now they decide to go far south. Frolic with it, sets one over for Lembrick, and the Stars will just reset, but these last couple, it almost just feels like just sending them in to kind of keep Lembrick warmed up. As now Ryan, they get behind her. Frolic with it, takes a fall. Now up ahead for Ford. Ford looks to find a cutter and just Kind of not on the same page as Heather McNabb. Just kind of shook her head and pushed her hands up. They were able to get past Juliana Ryan. 23-18 through. As Cavalier. Pushes one up. Now finds Dujits. Dujits on the near side. Looking to cross potentially. Rides that line. Now moves in. Dujits already has a goal and just pushes one over. And Kroger... The nearest one didn't even look like she was ready for the pass. As now the Stars end, Courtney Root pushes one over to Lembrick, and Lembrick comes out of the box and sets up for Olivia Red. Rabimbus at midfield, lost it for a sec, and now over towards the side. Kolich. Haven't seen her get a lot of touches in this one, but McNabb. Collects it on the far side, and now a ball that just flutters out of bounds. Looks like it went off of Root's foot. She kind of just punched it back. It just went off of Root and then out of bounds. So the Stars are going to recollect it. Now looking to travel inside the box. Coolidge. Over to Krakauer. Krakauer had lost it. Now Kroger up ahead with it. Kroger. Rabimbus now. And then now no one near Gallagher. So Gallagher, who had recently just come off on her shoot of the pass, tries to set up Manning and Cowles waits till the last possible second before collecting it and throwing it over. So now ball sent all the way in. Ryan, the nearest one, and Lembrick waves her off. So Lembrick has had to face about maybe five or six shots that have been about at the I'd say probably 40 feet away, Mark. Nothing really has been inside the box besides the corner kicks. As Rabimbus in those blue shoes sets up Duchitz over to the box. She already has one. Sets one up. Manning fires a shot and scores. Claire Manning, goal number two on this one. 20 minutes left to go here in the first. We've already got two here for the Morris Elite. a beautiful play and a beautiful pass. Bright Dujic setting up Manning who got behind some of the defenders and right in the middle. Manning has five goals on the season. Now you can make it six. She comes into a tie for fourth with Rabimbus. There are other games going on today so I would expect that to change. But as of right now with those stats untouched, Manning sits at tied for fourth in the USLW. So Dujic does have a goal and an assist in this one. Here on Morris Elite Day is a ball a little too far out of the reach of Gallagher. Just under 20 left to go. The Cedar Stars who dominated that first couple minutes and the script has completely flipped as Coolidge. Working over, now has Bruno. And a ball punched away. Kroger able to get a foot on it. It's just Manning as she looks for Rabimbus. Now he's got Kroger and Manning. It's a three on four as 27-10 through. 
as the ball just a little too far to the left. Had a cutting Manning. Have been potentially her seventh goal and broken that tie with Rabimbus. He's now moving up ahead. Sets one up and Lambert calls everyone off. So the first opportunity inside the box that we've seen in a, in a probably dozen minutes or so. Claire Manning at, at some of the practices that I had went to, they did a 2v2. And Claire Manning put up about five or six goals in the span of about 10 seconds or so. So she's proven the ability to score. A huge reason as to why she's got six goals on the season. As Dujits. Punches one back in Bruno looking across midcourt. Now moving quickly up ahead with it. Ryan takes a step in front, McNabb. Now McNabb fighting Ryan over in the corner, just looking to get rid of it. Ryan finally lost it, and McNabb. Working on Ryan, punches one up. Ford able to get a foot on it, no whistle blows. Ford just trying to collect it and finally sent away. Stars will have to reset just inside the offensive zone. Stars have done a good job of possessing the ball in the defensive zone, but in the offensive zone, that's where they've struggled. As now finding over on a cutter and finally just gets punched away. Morris Lee doing a good job defensively as Kroger slips around a couple. Now up ahead, finds Manning. Manning gets around and then Cowles has to come out to boot one away. Almost at that 15 minute mark left to go. It's been all Morris Elite here. Trying to find a cutter, and it seems like the Stars just not on the same page there. Marissa Tava just kind of set one to a ghost over on the sideline. And Rube will just have the throw in here as they play it back for Lembrick, so. Just about at that 15 minute mark in a 2-0 game. If you're just joining us now, Dujits with the first goal, and then Manning with the second goal, assisted by Dujits. So Dujits and a goal and an assist, Manning with a goal. That's Kroger. Looking for somewhere to go. Finally boots one with the left. Has Dujits all the way on the near side. This is how they've scored the last two goals as Dujits sets one up ahead, finds a cutter. Cavalier blocked away, still inside the box. Stars trying to get rid of it. Whistles blow, bodies fall. And finally, it's gonna be Stars ball. A great opportunity there. 15 minutes left to go, and Morris Ali has had a ton of them, the majority of which have happened in the last 15, but that might be the best one that we've seen without a goal. So a 2-0 game, and Sophia Cavalier, who almost just had that one. Her best moment was winning the state championship in high school. And she loves to go to Chipotle as she's back with it. Now Gallagher fires another shot and it gets punched away and now kicked out. Cowles taking two off the chest. Had one from Cavalier and then now Gallagher. Rubimbus is gonna be the one to have the corner kick. Rubimbus out of Warren, New Jersey. Phenomenal prospect. Huge reason as to why she's the number three player in the country and playing for UNC. She's got the corner and sets one up. Gallagher still with it and Cowell's the last to touch it. She fluttered it out of bounds, so another corner kick coming. So Rubimis will just set up shop on the opposite side. Still 2-0, can make it potentially three here. Goal from Dujits. A goal for Manning. Both of which sit inside the box. We've got Dujits 
in the middle and Manning the closest to Cowles inside the net as a ball low, punched away. Stars doing a good job, is now trying to track it down. Rabimbus trying to get a foot on it and she does, sets up Ryan. Ryan back to Dujits. Dujits and whistles blow off sides. So the first offsides call we've seen from the Morris Lee. We saw it in the last home game when Anakin had three offsides calls on three potential golden opportunities. As now a sub coming here for the Stars. So it'll be Catherine Slot coming in for Clara Ford. So Clara Ford, who's your leading goal scorer, now you're going to bring in Slot. Bruno looking to kick it, and finally she does after a long hesitation. Under 12 left to go. With Ford subbed out of the game and needing goals, specifically from your leading goal scorer, a little bit of an interesting play call there. So now it's McNabb with it. McNabb. 33-43. Now you can mark it specifically for the Cedar Stars. They were 18-2 outscoring their opponents. Now make it 18-4. So statistically speaking, Morrisley is in that number two spot. The Rough Riders sticking with one. It will definitely be a clear number two if they were to come out of this one with a win. Now the Stars with it, moving over. Tava was the one who had a foot on it, but they just get it back to Rabimbus, and Rabimbus now working, does a couple moves, spins around. Rabimbus now crossing mid. Up ahead and stops and spins, sends one over to Gallagher. Gallagher's wide open on the far side. And sets one up, Cowles comes all the way outside the that inner box. Manning the nearest one. As Tava once again has a good opportunity setting one over. McNabb on the near side. You can hear the Cedar Stars coach yelling, we have to be sharper. There's a throw in coming. Some of the girls coming over to get water. Specifically, Dujas has been there a couple times to get water. It is a very hot day out today. 78 degrees. As the throw in, set up. And now pushed over. And an easy save by Lembrick. Good opportunity there from Riley Mullen. Gets her first shot on the game. Haven't seen a lot of Mullen in this one. We were seeing a lot of Claire Ford, but she ends up getting subbed out. We've seen Bruno as well, crack over. McNabb as well, all getting touches on the ball. Just not a lot of good of opportunities. As Root sets one over towards the mid. And played back as Rubim is just a little out of position there. Now has to move up towards the middle. As Redden pushes one up and Ryan Quickly on top of her was McNabb. A little bit of a press there as now Manning plays one off of her foot. Rabimbus collects it, now sets it over to Gallagher. Gallagher looking for somewhere to go. He's got Manning and Rabimbus to her right. Spinning around now, a beautiful pass to Rabimbus. Fires a shot and on the left side, Melina Rabimbus. A little bit of a dribbler just gets right past Abby Cowles. And we've got three goals here, 36-35 through. Morris Elite dominating the Cedar Stars early in this one. So you look at Molina Rabimbus. Now she breaks the tie with Claire Manning. She's got seven goals on the season. She moves up to tied for third in the USLW.
Jazz now moving quickly into the box. McNabb working on Ryan. Flutters went up and Lembrick comes out and lost it off of her glove. So a corner kick coming here for the Stars. Under eight left to go. As they set up for the corner kick, Melina Rabimbis and some of her favorite moments is walking onto the field for the opening game of the U-17. Also playing for the UL Youth National Team. Spent some time in India as well playing for them. Has a ball headed up and over the net. Her favorite post-game snack is pizza. And she likes a show I've never seen before called How to Get Away with Murder. 38, 12 through, and a 3-0 game. If you're just tuning in now, Bridget Dujic had the first goal to go along with Claire Manning having the second. Dujic did assist on that one, and then two new girls getting involved with Molina Rabimbis and Gallagher. Scoring in this one with Rabimbis being the one to score, and Gallagher the one to set her up, as now Gallagher once again trying to set up Manning and a little too far out of her reach, Cowles. Had to come out to get it, 38-40 through. As the Stars on that far side, finally crossing midfield. It's Krakauer with it. Krakauer moving, fires a shot. Lembrick pushes one up and over the net. A beautiful save there from Lembrick. Sets up a corner kick. But still, keeping the ball out of the back of the net. Keeps this game at 3-0. Under six left to go here before half. So now make it the fifth corner kick. Coming here from the Stars. Lembrick lined up, a ball headed up and over the net. Lembrick just watched it go. So the save from Lembrick ends up working out. Did lead to a corner kick, but it ended up going nowhere, so. 3-0, Lembrick's gonna have a kick coming. Just about at that five minute mark. There's now Root on that far side. Under five left to go in the Morris League. You gotta be thinking if they go in with a 4-0 lead, they already go in with a three, so you're feeling pretty good as whistles blow and offsides call. It looks like Ridgeway kind of was turned around looking for somewhere to go and then realizing it was kind of already too late. As now a ball set up ahead, the Stars. Specifically, Tava trying to get something going as Rabimbis plays off her foot and takes a fall. No whistles blow as Manning with it has Dujic to her right, just kind of punches one off the foot of Ridgeway and they send it back to Cowles. As it seems like every time I look, there is more fans in the stadium. On the bleachers, as Ridgeway moving into the box, fires one and Lembrick plays it off of her foot. This is the most amount of ball sent Lembrick's way it's felt. She's had a good amount of saves in this one. That defense has done a good job of protecting her. But the Cedar Stars team is firing shots at will from all over the offensive zone. As Ryan has Manning and Rabimbus right to left. Dujit's now behind her. They try to set up Rabimbus. She couldn't get a foot on it. And Manning as well couldn't get a foot on it. Now here come the Stars. Coolidge. Up ahead, McNabb. Get in the box. McNabb moving towards the box, now turns around. Couple moves from Coolidge. Coolidge fires a floater up and over. Lembrick watched it, but I think that was a lot closer than Lembrick thought it was. Lembrick will have another kick coming. And now we're officially three minutes left to go till half and a lot to talk about if you're the Cedar Stars. In a 3-0 game, it was 0-0 in the last one. 
3-0 in this one as Lembrick now running into trouble. Finally gets it away for Root. She lost it out, so it's going to be the Stars ball. Just about parallel with the top of that box. Off the throw in, inside the box. Kroger tries to get a foot on it. Now back the other direction. A ball sent and fired. Just is off the hands of, or off the feet of Kroger. Kroger in those orange cleats definitely playing difficult on Tava. As now the Morrisley putting on a little bit of a trap. Gallagher trying to get something going. And now a ball fired. Now with it. McNabb fires a shot and just misses left. Redden and Ryan, the nearest ones there. Dugis was there as well, but. It's gonna be a free kick coming here, 43-13 through. Lembrick's been phenomenal so far in this game. Had a good amount of saves she's had to make. As now whistles blow, his body's fall. Root took a little bit of a fall. Haven't seen Root with the ball all that much. And finally, it almost felt like when she touched it, she kind of just went flying there. As Corman the one to set it back and Redden in those pink cleats winds up and fires one towards Manning. She plays it off of her chest. Cavalier with it runs into a lot of bodies. Rabimbus moves around a couple and finally sent back towards Cowles. Rabimbus will send one over and just outside that box under a minute left to go bearing any extra time. I'll try to set up Tava. Tava moving quickly. Dujic quickly tracks her down, and Tava now looking for somewhere to go. Duji gets a foot on it, and Cedar Stars just really can't seem to get anywhere near the box. Duji's coming all the way in the offensive zone, all the way over. So it'll be one minute of extra time here. That 44-40 mark. Be around that 46 minute, so. Cedar Stars is gonna go into the locker room. You gotta think in this next minute or so. Got to put on a little bit of a display here as Gallagher and Root playing back and forth. As now Corman watches the ball go out of bounds at midfield. At that 45 minute mark, so just under about a minute of extra time. Manning plays one off of her foot. Now up to Gallagher, Gallagher to Manning. Manning to Rabimbus. Rabimbus looking towards Kroger's way, has Duges to her left, has a cutter just a little too far out of her reach. Manning comes up and Cowles jumps on top of it inside the box. A bunch of good opportunities there passing. All from Kroger, Dujic, Manning, as well as Cavalier. Showing how good this Morris Elite team is at passing, getting open, creating a lot of good opportunities as Gallagher watches the ball go out of bounds. Heenan's gonna be the one to throw it. And then regardless, that is gonna do it for the first half. If you're just tuning in now, you missed a little bit of a hectic first half. Bridget Dujic got on the board early with the first goal, and then you switch over to their side. Dujic assisted later on for Manning, and then Melina Rabimbis scored a goal as well, making it the third goal. So 3-0 lead here against Two of the top three teams in the division, Cedar Stars and Morris Elite here at Frederick Douglass Field, the home of Morris Elite, and they lead this one 3-0. Second half still set to get underway, but we head into halftime for Nick Carlson as well as Morris Sussex Sports. We'll see you in about 15 minutes or so. Is it time for you to report? Place your roof? Well, give Hadco Builders in Chester, New Jersey a call. They've built an amazing reputation over the past 30 years as one of New Jersey's top builders. Hadco will replace your roof the right way at a super fair price and usually get the job done by the time you come home from work. Call or text Tony to get a quote today at 973-818-8516 or visit them at hadcobuilders.com.
Jen Basilino of the Kosher Real Estate Group, LLC, is a Morris County top real estate agent and New Jersey Circle of Excellence award winner year over year that takes the time and care to understand your real estate needs and concerns. She's extremely successful in representing clients in selling and purchasing a home, new construction, townhouses, million-dollar homes, rentals, and even commercial properties. Call her today at 973-202-2103. Do your glory days as a high school athlete feel far behind you? Are memories of being out there competing so clear that you can feel it? But then reality sets in and your stiff back, achy knees, and painful shoulders remind you that it's been years or even decades since you can move that way. Don't worry. The team at Better With Physical Therapy's one-on-one customized care can help you feel and move better again. Their specialists will find the cause of what's slowing you down and build a plan that will help you realize that your glory days are still ahead of you. You can can get better with Better With Physical Therapy located in the Madison YMCA. Request an appointment today at betterwithpt.com. that come with working here, I would say that the most valuable thing WIS offers is freedom. The freedom to make the most of your role, to really go beyond the job description, the freedom to think differently and be rewarded for it, and the freedom to show up as 100% who you are. Maximum Health Physical Therapy is an individually owned practice with offices in Bud Lake and Long Valley, New Jersey. Our licensed therapists use hands-on manual therapy and are actively involved in our patients' progress. We use a collaborative team approach which benefits our patients and we accept most insurance plans, including Medicare. We offer ARPWAVE Neurotherapy, which accelerates healing 10 times faster, drastically decreases chronic pain, is FDA approved, and is covered by most insurance companies. Please visit us at Max. MaximumHealthPT.com and regain the life you love. Sussex Meatpacking in Wharton, New Jersey is a family-owned and operated business specializing in USDA prime and choice meats, pork, poultry, lamb, veal, and many other store-made specialty items. They also have a fantastic deli, a wonderful market with all the freshest fruits, veggies, and pre-made meals, and they can cater any event, including your family holiday dinners, more delicious than you can on your own. Visit them at sussexmeat.com. So a very common thing that happens in homes is the fight over the thermostat. And usually the dad is in charge of it. Sometimes thermostats end up in a lockbox so nobody touches them. And if somebody touches them, they're in trouble. Trying to find a happy medium in a regular household is usually beyond the general knowledge. Most people don't know this. This is where you need somebody like us at ICS. We figure out and fine tune and personalize your personal comfort. It's like having your own black market dealer in personal comfort. From the moment you place a call with ICS, you are the most important person on the planet. From the point of contact with our dispatcher in our office to when our technician leaves your place, we wanna make sure that we exceed every expectation you had. So if you are tired of that house with the cold and hot spots and you want more personal comfort, visit our website, icshvac.com. George J. Keller and Sons want your house to be the kind of home for all to see. Best roofing, windows, siding too. Great solar and gutters, we're here for you. Our seasoned pros are unsurpassed, so give a call, we'll take your task. Transform your home, that's what we do. So give a call, we're here for you. For roofing, siding, windows. 
windows and solar. We do it all for you. George J. Keller and Son. Your family-owned operation since 1980. Call for your free estimate. Hey, don't you just love it when more assistant sports broadcast your games? Or do you prefer a silent motion-detecting camera just following the movement on the court? Let's face it, the only real way to watch your favorite team is through Morris Sussex Sports' award-winning service that brings you play-by-play commentary, live instant replays, cool cinematic graphics, real-time scoreboard, fun fan engagement, and much, much more. Plus, all of our broadcasts are free to watch. Grandparents can easily pull it up on their smart TVs, and alumni can watch from all over the world. So if you want to reserve us, have your games broadcasted the Morris Essex Sports way, then just reach out to me, George Muha, at george at morrisessexsports.com, or call or text me at 973-713-5944. Morris Sussex Sports has a big goal we want to ask your help in achieving. One of the most popular things we do is publish digital trading cards of athletes. We feel strongly that high school athletes are one of the most important parts of our community, and the trading cards allow us to recognize and celebrate as many athletes as possible. So we have a lofty mission to create a trading card for every single athlete that wears a sports jersey in the Morris Sussex area. But to do that, we need more local businesses that want to help us by sponsoring these trading Trading cards. This is a great way for a business to endear themselves to the communities they do business in. And not only would their business be featured prominently as a sponsor of a new scholar athlete every week, we also advertise them across our social media, our website, and our game broadcasts. And we get over 4 million views a week, 80% of whom are adults 35 to 65. There is no other publication or media company that has even close to that reach in this region. So if you know of a local business that loves to support the scholar-athletes in their town or their surrounding area and would benefit from the exposure we would bring, please send them our way. Just call or text 973-713-5944 or email george at morrissussexsports.com. My room is so cold, my fish froze. Mine's so hot, my sneakers melted. Rooms with different temperatures? That means your HVAC system is outdated and wasting energy. At ICS, we'll install an energy efficient system that provides a constant flow of clean, fresh air at the perfect temperature in every room. You could save money each month, and the price we quote is the price you'll pay. Get a quote today. See why we say ICS for HVAC. I see why. Watching your loved one play high school sports is a special time in their life you don't want to regret missing. If you're not present for these events due to drinking, misusing medication, or lost control using drugs recreationally, the team at Recovery Centers of America can help. My name is Don, and I'm a treatment advocate for RCA, and I stopped drinking 30 years ago. If I can do it, so can you. Muster up the courage and call me anytime, even in the middle of the night, at 973-722-4720 for a confidential conversation so we can get you back in the stands where you belong. Concerned family members can also call me. Again, any conversation will be absolutely discreet. I am here for you. Just pick up the phone. Montella Inc. is a family-owned dumpster rental business located in Stanhope, New Jersey that's been around since 1984. We provide prompt, quality service at a reasonable price for our New Jersey customers, whom we consider our family. We don't just take out the trash. Montella Inc. is a full-service waste management company servicing demolition sites, construction projects, factory sites, shopping centers, commercial businesses, and homeowners. Call today at 973-927-2232. Rich Latman, realtor with Keeneland Latman, Sotheby's International Realty, enjoys helping clients through the process of selling their home and finding their dream home. Whether you need more space, are a first time home buyer, or ready to downsize, Rich can help. Rich is a National Association of Realtors Circle of Excellence Award winner and one of the top producers in his area. With Rich, you can always expect expert analysis excellent service, and exceptional results. For all real estate in Morris and Somerset counties, contact Rich Latman at 908-839-8487 or by email at rlatman at klsir.com.
If you live in Andover, Blairstown, Byram, Frankfurt, Franklin, Frieden, Freelingheisen, Green, Hampton, Hardwick, Hope, Knowlton, Lafayette, Newton, Sparta, Stillwater, Sussex, and Wantage. Planet Networks is building high-speed fiber in your neighborhood. Visit GetPlanetFiber.com today to learn more. Hmm. deathly afraid of public speaking. I intentionally became an adjunct professor teaching tax, and I also became a Zumba instructor as a way of overcoming this fear of mine. They're both forms of leading and teaching in their own right. Bottom line though, WIS supports my passions. I truly believe that WIS wants me to be the best version of myself, and it's such an amazing feeling that I truly have the freedom to do that here. At Planet Networks, our high-speed fiber is designed to be fast. Up to 300 times faster than cable and up to 500 times faster than DSL. As fast as 10,000 megabits per second up and down if you speak nerd. We're talking cheetah, bullet train, lightning strike, hummingbird, race car kind of fast. Planet Networks, so fast it's worth the wait. Me in this game, we got big plans. Overcoming every challenge. And right now, that means getting by him. It means putting in the time to get faster, to get stronger. One thing is for certain, I will never be outworked. Nick Carlson back here with Morris Sussex Sports here at Frederick Douglass Field on the campus of Rutgers Newark as well as NJIT right down the road. Also just to let you guys know this is Morris Elite Day and you can register your youth for the Morris Elite Super Y team. It's one of the best opportunities to go against some of the top players in the region. You can try out this summer with an opportunity to qualify for nationals in Tampa, Florida as well as be a part of the Morris Elite. We're setting back to get underway here in this one. Still 45 left to go. Morris Elite dominated the majority of basically the whole entire first half. Besides that first five minutes, so Cedar Stars basically was all over him. Morris Elite was really not able to cross midfield at all. Take out those five minutes and 40 minutes went by, it was just pure domination from the Morris Elite. As it doesn't look like there's any new subs as of now, you've got Kroger, Manning, and Duchitz down the line right in front of us. Rabimis as well, Gallagher, Cavalier, Redden, all as well. Ryan too, Root. As Corman in as well. Corman did not get a lot of touches in that first Gallagher still in the game as well. Prusak is actually the sub that came in. Is the first shot just missed his left. A quick one there by Heather McNabb. Only 25 seconds through or so. First shot came from the Cedar Stars. You had Dujic with that first goal. Does have an assist as well. Molina Rabimis gets up to seven goals on the season. Had a goal in the later stages of that half. You got Claire Manning had a goal as well. She gets up to six on the season. So Rabimis tied for third as of right now in goals. Manning tied for fourth right now in goals. And then Dujic makes her way up, but still the top two goal scorers in Dujic and Rabimis both score in this one. Rabimis in every goal she's played, or in every game she's played in, she has scored. As Manning trying to chase down Bruno, but 
Bruno, a couple moves in those pink cleats, working on Rabimbus, has to get rid of it, and she does. Moving quickly with it. Bruno sets one up ahead, just off the foot weird, and Redden trying to recollect it. I was talking about it before we went to the half, as now up ahead with it, McNabb working over, and now punched away. A great defensive play there by Root, as Gallagher sets up Ryan. I was talking about it before the broadcast had ended and went to the half. Right now, the Morris lead in the plus minus department is ahead of the Cedar Stars. Right now, 3-0. Regardless of if they let up another point or not, it would be huge because the Morris lead and Cedar Stars tied in that first game. Now in this second game, you would have it to where it's the game and then the plus minus as well because they're leading in the plus minus 18 to four. The Morris Elite, if the score sticks to where it is, is only 18 to three. So you'd have it in the head-to-head -head tiebreaker category and then the plus minus category. So two separate categories that you could take kind of the head on them. Still the Long Island Rough Riders are gonna be the team to look at. Beat the Morris Elite in that first one. So that June 17th game means all the more as Manning off the steal, moving around. Looking for somewhere to go, now finds a cutter. Ryan with it. Ryan moving around Ridgeway. And then now sets one at Manning to Rabimbus. Now moving inside the box, has Ryan to her left, and Cowles comes out of the inside. And fires a laser all the way towards. Ridgeway not able to collect it, and Gallagher once again. Another good opportunity here coming from the Morris Elite. Manning up, fires a floater shot just off the right side. No signal yet, and it's a goal, so just on that right side, Manning gets her second goal of this one in a 4-0 game, 48-22. Played through. Has a little bit of a hesitation there. Not sure if it kind of hit that right side outside of the net or... Whatever it was, Manning definitely just barely thinned it inside that pole as they try to set up on that far side. Heenan. See your stars on that far side. Been 4-0. Now for about a minute or so, it was 3-0 for the good majority of that time. Manning's got her second, so a potential hat trick coming here for Claire Manning. She's already got seven goals on the season. Came into the season, or this game, with five. Bruno's got a lot of touches at midfield. Manning pressuring her. Manning finally gives off, and Stars end up just turning it over. Finally, whistles blow. Ryan looked like she hit the deck, and it was Ryan, so a free kick coming as Redden looks to line up to kick it. Every plus minus is gonna count here, specifically because that's a huge reason as to how the seating works. It also shows teams like the Rough Riders, who sit at the top of the division, that they just put up four, if not more, Goals against the number two team in the division. 50 minutes through. So Corman's gonna take a seat. You got Henna Anakin coming in now. Anakin's got a bunch of goals to her name. Had two goals in the last game that they played, so you get some fresh legs in. Corman's gonna take a seat. And again, comes in as now bodies fall all over the place. No whistles blow as Manning trying to get rid of it. And now push back the other direction. The Cedar Star is just working backwards here. As finally Coolidge with it. Coolidge now plays it back. The Stars have done a good job of playing keep away, but when they gotta start to put the goals up as a quick move around. A bunch of moves from Ridgeway here 
as now Mullen. Mullen looks to set up and just a little too far out of Krakauer's reach. Ends up just going out of bounds, so a free kick coming here from Lemberg. Notable one not in this one. Danielle Barino. It's been a great defensive player for the Morris Elite, not playing in this one. Juliana Ryan has done a good job taking her spot as Prusak. Now with it, finds Manning. Manning had two jets in front of her cutting, and now she sends one over for Anakin. And offsides, Anakin once again. That was the problem in the last game. Anakin, a little bit too happy of feet. Always getting behind the defenders. As now over towards the side, has Krakauer. Krakauer trying to chase her down. Root now gets a foot on a Krakauer falls, and Lembrick didn't even have to come out of the net. As now Root, a little bit of a stiff arm. And now over to Prusak. Root working up ahead, Anakin sends the body for Heenan, and now Heenan collects it and then sends it back out of bounds. So a throw in coming here, Prusak heads over there. This is also a great time to let you know that the Morris League Cup, we're getting closer to it. It's back for the 2023 season. Registration ends June 5th with games kicking off on June 24th. You can register today. It's for U8 to U18 boys and girls. You can register today at MorrisEliteSoccer.com. Fifty-three minutes played through seven in this half. We have a goal from the Morris Elite as Mullen takes a fall. Prusak over to the corner, and no collapse from the Stars as Root just sends it back to Lembrick. So Lembrick gets her first touch of this half. Under a lot of pressure in that first six minutes, then on the later stages, just a lot of long balls. As moving in, Kulich pushes one over. Redding gets a foot in front of him and then fires it back out of bounds. So a throw and coming parallel with the box. Haven't seen a lot of offense besides that goal from the Morris Elite, but still, it is early in this half. Coolidge working, winding up, and she fires a long ball, and Lembrick just snags it in the air, and she'll send one over to Prusak. Nine minutes played through. As Gallagher sets one back over, and Prusak's had a lot of touches. That green headband. Kind of funny because that's Cedar Star's color, green. He's now moving quickly with it. Ryan spinning around a couple, looking for somewhere to go. Manning wasn't on the same page as a potential offsides, but Ryan just sends one all the way over to Cowles. So Cowles will set up and tells everybody just to go backwards as we are officially 10 minutes through this half. Cowles up ahead. Ridgeway now looking for somewhere to go at midfield. Morris Elite have done a good job of pressuring as Prusak trying to set up Anakin and Anakin kind of just gives off last second. Looks like her shoe needs to be untied as finally she would just range down to tie it and then come back. So 55-40 played through. Cedar Stars substitution coming. Marissa Tav is gonna take a seat. And then now over to Root. Root just lets it roll slowly out of bounds as Lembrick's gonna have the kick, so. Lembrick really hasn't had to make that crazy of saves early in this second half. 
That defense, as I had talked about, of Red and Ryan Root, Gallagher, Barino as well. Then you've got the standout forwards in Manning, Rabimbus, Jujits as well. You had Corman take a seat earlier and Anakin comes in, but Anakin's been proven to score as well. Also got Clara Ford out for the Cedar Stars. Took a seat at the end of that second half, your leading goal scorer. Kind of neater, specifically when you're down 4-0, as Krakauer moving towards the box and fires one, and Lembrick catches it and falls down. So the Cedar Stars have not really been able to get into the box. It's been a lot of long shots. We heard some of the coaches for the Cedar Stars repeatedly yelling, just keep firing shots. Lembrick has proven that she can make those saves, not only in this game, but in other games as well. Specifically, she had a great save with that penalty shot earlier against Manhattan as Prue sacked just a little off sides. Had Manning wide open. Would have been a potential hat trick for Manning. She's already got two goals out of Georgetown. Manning's been phenomenal all season long. So you've got Rabimbus, the potential, or actually is UNC commit in Rabimbus from UNC, and then Manning as well out of Georgetown. Dugis as well out of Marist. A couple of girls on this team are from Loyola, Maryland. Specifically, you look at Jessica Corman, Elizabeth Gallagher, Den Blaker, who's on the bench as well. Corman and Gallagher both started this game. Corman took a seat, haven't seen Den Blaker yet in this one. As the ball just sent back and the Cedar Stars just looking to mount any sort of something as they send one up ahead and Redden collects it as Crack hour goes down. Now it looks like she's holding her left ankle. Took a little bit of a weird fall. I saw her kind of bounce a little weird. No signal on if the trainers are gonna have to come out yet. If Crack hour were to leave, this would be a huge hit. You're down Claire Ford, you're down another one of your top offensive players in Crack hour. It's definitely that left leg that she is showing a little bit on, but no trainers will come out. As it looks like it's gonna be subs coming in. It looks like it's Paige West. Bridget Boussieri as well. So now West comes in. Mullen takes a seat. No signal on if they're going to set Bridget Buzieri in. And then now they will. So Buzieri is going to come in. Crack hour, they're going to take a look at her on the bench. The training staff's going to come over. You've also got some other substitutions coming in here for Morris Elite. Osterman looks to potentially coming in. Gallagher and Dujic as well look like they're on their way out. So you've got Vargas coming in, you've got Osterman coming in. Dujic takes a seat, Gallagher takes a seat. So now the forwards as it seems. It's for Bimbus, Vargas, Andekin, Manning, as well as Osterman. And Manning just fires one up. So 60-53 played through. A couple minutes of substitutions there as Lembrick fires one back out off the goal kick. As Gallagher takes his seat. 
Fun fact about her, she loves friends and the office and will eat any kind of pasta. At 61-23 played through the Cedar Stars, that light at the end of the tunnel is slowly starting to dim as Manning working and fires one up ahead. It's got a cutting Vargas, has one in front of her, plays it off of her head, has Anakin to her left, now finds Anakin, Anakin fires a shot and gets it in. Anakin off the bench, has a goal, make it a 5-0 game, 61-49 through. Hannah Anakin, a great shot just on the left side. Just a beautiful play from Vargas off of her head, saw Anakin off the side, and Anakin came over and just fired the shot. Callis just a little too far out of her reach. Anakin comes all the way over, gives a little bit of a hug to head coach Steph Savino. We've got a 5-0 game, so. Now over on the near side. Once again, Rabimbus, no offsides call. Has Oshman to her right. Rabimbus working, turning, fires a shot and a quick two in under two minutes. Rabimbus gets involved as well. Cedar Stars unraveling here with under 30 left to go. Melina Rabimbus has her second goal of this one. Just a complete breakdown from the Stars and Rabimbis just working all the way around the Stars. Heenan was the nearest defender, but we've got a 6-0 game against the number two team in the division in Cedar and Morris Elite making quick work of them. Coming off that 2-1 game against the Rough Riders. Sixty-three forty-four left to go. Six-zero game. Went into this one as a three-zero game, and eighteen minutes through is a ball that flutters all the way out of bounds. Lembrick is going to have a kick here. Well, it's 20 minutes through. We went into the first half with a 3-0 game, and then now we're at a 6-0 game. So took about 45 minutes to get three. It's taken 20 to get three. It's also a depleted Cedar Stars team facing quite the deficit here of a 6-0 game. Also don't have Clara Ford. 64, 55 through and 20 minutes through. It's also a great time to let you know that you can get your kids into the game with the Morris Elite 2023 summer camps, whether it's soccer and swim. They also have goalkeeper technical camps as well. They all start in just a few weeks. You can register today, be a part of the Morris Elite with their summer camps. They do start in about two and a half weeks or so, June 26th. You can register or just look for more information at www.morrisleetsoccer.com slash summer camps to get more information to get your son or daughter involved today. Now ball sent in off the free kick. Still had the Cedar Stars. Still heading, now still in the box. Manning gets a foot on it. Stars back with it and they kick it out themselves. As now the Stars trying to recollect off of a couple feet and then now moving up with it. Morris Elite doing a good job of not allowing them at all anywhere near the box. 
as Bruno sets one up. Now a fluttering ball. Kroger sends it away and out. So a corner kick coming. Lembrick's first real test in, can make the argument about 30, 40 minutes or so. Six zero game. Now the ball sent in and Lembrick catches it through all the bodies. A great save there by Lembrick, a huge reason as to why they're up 6-0. Manning and Rabimbis could also be credited to why it's 6-0 and don't forget Dujic and Endekin as well. You look at the plus minuses specifically in the standings. Worsley had came into this game outscoring their opponents 18 to 13. Now you could chalk it up for 24 to 3. You look at the Cedar Star side of things, it was 18 to 2. Now it's sitting not so pretty at 18 and 8. In this six euro game, and we still have 23 minutes to go, so that plus minus could change. The Rough Riders at that clear all the way top. Haven't lost a game, just beat the Morris Elite two to one. Has now a ball set up for Vargas. Vargas completely offsides by about seven or eight monster trucks. 67-50 through and a hydration break. It is 79 degrees out so with cloudy conditions coming from 6 p.m. to 7 p.m., we'll hit about 70-ish degrees or so. But regardless, in this 6-0 game, we're going to take a quick step off here. I'm Nick Carlson with Morris Sussex Sports as the girls hydrate. Still about 20 minutes left to go or so right here with Morris Sussex Sports. If you live in Andover, Blairstown, Byram, Frankfurt, Franklin, Frieden, Freelingheisen, Green, Hampton, Hardwick, Hope, Knowlton, Lafayette, Newton, Sparta, Stillwater, Sussex, and Wantage. Planet Networks is building high-speed fiber in your neighborhood. Visit GetPlanetFiber.com today to learn more. Go ahead, take a deep breath. Oh, nice, huh? That's some clean, fresh air at the perfect temperature. That is good. Who installed the system? ICS. They're the leaders in HVAC. They make the duct work at their own factory, so we even save some money. That's impressive. You recommend them? <laughs> it's ICS for HVAC. I see why. Hey, Lorraine, go get a big plastic bag. Take some air home with you. Back here, Frederick Douglass Field, just outside of NJIT and inside of Rutgers Newark. In what coming into it, that would be a very tight game. It turned into a 6-0 game in favor of the Morris lead and complete domination. If you tuned into that first couple minutes or so, you would have thought it would have been really all Cedar Stars five minutes through, but for the last 65 minutes or so, it's been all Morris Elite. Has now a ball set up ahead, and Andekin playing it off and just sends it out of bounds. Some of the plus minuses to look at here, the Rough Riders goals for and goals against wise. I talked about how the Cedar Stars had come in with an 18 to two, and then the Morris Elite 18 to three. The Rough Riders are 25 and four. So a wide margin there, and that's also counting the Morris Elite game where they had one two to zero, or two to one, excuse me. So the Rough Riders have really put it down on a lot of the teams that they have played. A huge reason as to why they're five and zero. Oh. Cedar Stars four zero oh and one, and bearing any type of wild collapse, will end up having their first loss of the season. As subs coming in. It looks like they're gonna take out Arden Lembrick. They've got Lembrick and then Den Blaker coming in as well. So Arden Lembrick, this is the first time that we've seen this. Joella Chase is gonna come in. Den Blaker is gonna come in as well. 
So Lembrick for the first time all season will be taken out. They're gonna bring in Joella Chase. So Rabimbus, as you heard on the announcement, is going to take a seat. Demblaker is going to come in. So a bunch of all new subs here as the ball crossed up and over. And Joella Chase, not even 30 seconds through the game, has to make a save. Lembrick was under a decent amount of pressure. You got to expect Joella Chase is going to be under just about the same amount as they look up ahead to Anakin. Anakin's been offsides a bunch of times and not offsides. That one's got Vargas to her right. Sets one up for her. Vargas taking a couple feet around, runs into a bunch of bodies and has to exit the box. Prusak working around, now gives it to Anakin. Anakin fires across her and now offsides Anakin. She's been offsides. Quite the decent amount in the last couple home games, just a little too antsy. Now working with it. McNabb getting around Manning and then gives it over. Still haven't seen Manning take a seat yet, as well as Kroger. Some of the forwards who have been doing a lot of running. Manning does have two goals, so it'll be interesting to see if they want to have her go for another hat trick or not as Chase sees one fly just a little too far to the right of the net. 72-59, now make it 73. So 18 left to, 17 left to go. As taking a look at these standings, Morris Elite with this one will move up to two. Cedar Stars will drop down to three. Then you've got FA Euro New York and Manhattan SC as well at that four and five. And then beyond that, you've got Paisley Athletic, 0-2-2, two two. AC Connecticut, 0-4. Westchester Flames, 0-4. A weaker spot down at that bottom. I mean, AC Connecticut, goals for and goals against, it's 2-15, and, and their plus minus is minus 13 right now. And Westchester Flames is just a little worse at two goals for and 26 against with a minus 24 plus minus, so... Definitely some weaker competition down at the bottom of that division, but the stars at the top are the Long Island Rough Riders, Cedar Stars, and Morris Elite. Now it's about to be the Rough Riders, Morris Elite, and Cedar Stars in that order in the division. Still a lot of ground to make up if you're the Morris Elite coming off that 2-1 game against the Rough Riders. A team that's been pretty dominant these past couple of years. Seventy-four, thirty-three, and Heenan, who as well has not come out of the game. You got Coolidge there as well. She fires a shot, just misses right. Chase watched it go over. She's got a free kick coming. Joella Chase on this team last year played a couple games as well. Arden in that starting spot. Fifteen minutes left to go. And a ball set up ahead for Osterman. Osterman plays it off of her foot weird and tries to collect it as Manning now has it. Trying to move around a couple and McNabb now with it. McNabb and Redden just takes a step in front of it. McManning as well with it. And Redden and Manning just playing pass back and forth. 75-25 through. Make sure to stick around the USL2 Morris Elite game. Boys will be here as well as a lot of the youth boys as well coming to support the senior team. A lot of the USLW girls on the youth teams are here as Anakin moving inside the box has Vargas right there as well. Anakin couple of steps bouncing around, lost it, a bunch of creative moves there, and finally the Stars send it back. Root, the one who just sent it in. Prusak coming off the bench, finds it over. 
Vargas as well, freshly off the bench, just outside the box. Finds a cutter over to Osterman, and it can there as well, but it just gets punched over towards the Stars. Kroger trying to chase it down, and finally back towards Margot Ridgeway. Ryan was on her, but under 14 left to go. Here in this USLW game. As finally whistles blow and a free kick coming. Just about maybe 15, 20 feet or so away from the tip of that circle of Rutgers Newark. Just about diagonally with it. It'll be Bruno to kick it. Winds up and fires one inside the box. Still in the box, heads off a couple of girls. Now moving with it. Krokauer with it. Kroger tries to get a foot on it. Moves around a couple of girls. Lost it for a sec. Anakin with it too. Now headed up, up inside, and finally pushed out of bounds. Anakin just watches it go, but it's going to be a throw in coming here just about parallel with that top box. Finally, the throw in comes in, and Coolidge now working on Kroger. Down the line, Anakin able to take it away and flutters one up. Has Vargas ranging down. No whistle. Vargas with the left. Punches one up just a little too far right. And Callis able to jump on it inside the box and send one back out. Good opportunity there as Paige West collects it. At that 12 minute mark now, ball goes out of bounds. It'll be a more elite throw in here, but 6 0 game. Got to think this is going to be a little bit of a heads up here for the Rough Riders. They did just beat the Morris Elite 2-1, to one, but got to think if you're the Rough Riders and you just saw the Morris Elite beat the number two team in the division 6-0, to zero, definitely raises an eyebrow. Morris Elite who had come in 3-1-1. FA Euro New York and Manhattan are the two teams that follow them, but Morris Elite has beaten both of them. And that is without even playing Paisley Athletic, who we will see them in just a little bit as the ball that flutters all the way over the top of the crossbar. Chase has had to make one save, but beyond that, she really hasn't been challenged. Lembrick had dealt with a little bit specifically in the early stages of that first half. As Rudin now gets one up to Manning. It'll be interesting to see if they do pull Manning from this one. Her and Kroger have played 79, 22 minutes of this game. As Prusak, no one near her. Looks to her right, Scott Vargas goes left to Anakin. Anakin working, fires a shot way over towards the other net and bounces off that one as Callis goes over to collect it. You'd have to think that whoever's in right now is who it's gonna be for the remainder of this one. That includes the defender and Rudin, Ryan Root. Got Manning out there as well as I talked about. Vargas, Anakin, Den Blaker, Osterman, Prusak as well. It's now on the far side, under 10 left to go. Rudin working on the body over by Ridgeway. Ridgeway working on Rudin. Now Ryan comes over to help too, and the ball fluttered up and back off of Ryan's foot. So just on that goal side, a corner kick coming. It's only been two corner kicks from the Morris Elite. There's been seven from the Cedar Stars, and they really have not had a good opportunity on them as they play the short route here as Gabby Kolich collects it and fires a shot inside the box, misses left as it almost just feels like life is basically just depleted this Cedar Stars team as a lot of these balls are just coming in from all over the place. Morris Elite up 6-0 in this one. If you're just joining us now, Claire Manning with two goals, Melina Rabimbis with two goals, 
Anakin just had the latest one, and then Dujic had the first one, so. A lot of goals scored, two girls with two goals. And then a pair of goals, one coming from Dujic and one coming from Anakin. As Manning tries to set up a cutter, has Ryan inside the box, sets up for Vargas. Vargas pushes one just off the right side. A beautiful play there. And we've got a seventh goal in this game, the most by the Morris Elite here at home. 81-48 through, and Vargas has her second. Just a great overall play there. A little bit of an ankle breaker there by Callis. You see it on the monitor. Just a great play there by Vargas and kind of came off of her foot weird, but you already had Callis ranging over to her right, couldn't get back in time, so Vargas has two. So now we've got a pair of goals, both coming from Vargas, Manning, and Rabimbis, all who have two goals. And then you've got Andikin and Dujits with one, so. But Vargas only has one goal, excuse me. She was, she was the one who had set her up earlier. Vargas does have an assist though, so she doesn't have that second goal, excuse me, she only has the one. But 83 minutes throw, 7-0 game. Morris Lee potentially looking to have the most goals that they've scored on the season here. It would be eight as Anakin flying through inside the box, sets up Osterman and just threw her legs. Callis comes out of the box and you could have had eight there. Osterman had the opportunity. 83-32 throw, and they send one all the way up. The Stars just trying to keep it away, but Manning doing a good job over at the midfield line. Manning up ahead, and Vargas would have been offside there. Cowles waits for it. So now you could pump up. Morris Elite's goals four to 25. So if the Rough Riders do get shut out in their next game, there will be a tie for first in terms of plus four, but that head-to-head -head tiebreaker really killing the Morris Elite here. As now up for Vargas and whistles blow as she's off sides. Looked around a little bit confused, but the Stars really not even close to her as almost at that five minute mark, we've seen Manning twice now on the season score with under three minutes left to go. We could have another one of those right here as Bruno sets one up. Bruno working around, Manning gets her hands on it and now it just feels like the Stars Moving with a little bit less of pace. As Bruno and Ridgeway just playing pass and they send one up. Everybody just moving with a little bit slower of a pace and they have good reason. Morris Elite are up seven to zero. They had beaten the Westchester Flames seven to zero as well. Westchester Flames are 0-4 in total. One of those losses had come from Cedar Stars and then just from the Morris Elite just about a week ago. If it were to stick at what it is now, 7-0, would be a tie in the division. The Westchester Flames game was actually 6-0, so we have our official largest scoring of this season so far for the Morris Elite, making it seven to zero. 
The Morris Elite had played the Westchester Flames on the road. A goal had come from Osterman, Rabimbus as well. Manning had a hat trick. And Rabimbus had two goals, so. Manning doesn't have a hat trick yet in this one, potentially with just a couple minutes left to go. Rabimbus did have two goals. Manning does have two right now. It's now moving quickly with it, Heenan. Heenan lost it for a second, a ball fly all the way towards the left side of the net. So Joella Chase really has not had to face a whole lot. Just about at that three minute mark. And then now make it three. So at the 87 minutes played through, no signal yet on extra time, but bearing a miracle, it will be a Morris Elite victory. So 87-27 played through. 7-0 game, Ryan moving quickly up ahead with it. Has Osterman in front and whistles blow. I'd say a questionable call there. Looks like Ridgeway was right in front of her, but Osterman who had that opportunity at a goal earlier was not able to stay on sides. Has now punched up ahead. Olivia's there as well, so is Root. Now on the far side, just counting down these last two minutes or so. Morris Elite just looking to play keep away. Really no reason to do anything crazy as now they get one out to Prusak. Prusak. Looking for somewhere to go, and up ahead, once again in the offensive zone, that's where they've spent the majority of this half, if not all of it, as they find Andekin on the near side. Scrambling around, fires one off of the foot, takes it, recollects where they're left, fires another one, now punched back up and over. Another good opportunity by the Morris Elite, as that pedal is still to the floor. Here with almost under a minute left to go. Osterman, Vargas have all been key factors of that. And Akin as well. Haven't seen a lot of Manning and Kroger, but now Kroger with the Chief fires a shot right into the hands of Callis. Really haven't seen Kroger at all in the last 10 minutes or so. Hasn't had a lot of touches. As now Denblaker goes over to pressure and she takes a couple of steps back. Gabby Coolidge up ahead, 30 seconds through. Bearing any extra time, this will really be just about it. We did, we did have that hydration break. As Anakin gets around a couple of the defenders now moving quickly, has Heenan on her. Now takes a step in front and tries to go back for Osterman. Osterman ranging over on the near side. Everybody moves up slowly as Osterman just outside the box. A couple of moves, finally a slide tackle sends it away as Osterman looks away in disgust. As we're at the 90 minute mark, so just waiting for the whistles to blow in this 7-0 game. McNabb moving around a couple. Now finds a cutter, getting around a couple more inside the box, just outside of it. Ridgeway fires when Chase watches it go, and it just goes just down the line, but the refs blow the whistle before, and 90 minutes through, a 7-0 game. Pair of goals coming from Rabimbus, as well as Manning getting involved too, Andekin, Vargas. A bunch of goals all around, and the largest scoring total from the Morris League comes here at home at Frederick Douglass Field. The second team no more in terms of the standings. Cedar goes down to three, Morris Elite moves up to two. Still have to get through the Rough Riders, but make sure to stick around. The USL2 boys team taking place at around 6.30 or so is the scheduled game time start. So stick around here on Morris Sussex Sports. I've been Nick Carlson. If you're sticking around for the other one, we'll see you in about an hour and 15 minutes or so. For more of Sussex Sports, thank you for tuning in.
up back with it. Now up ahead to Dujits, no offsides call, has people to her left. Dujits left, Dujits, a great opportunity. Just waiting for that goal to come from her. She does have four goals as a ball that gets passed over to Dujits. Dujits bodying down, now moves in, spits around, fires a shot and scores. Dujits missed the one earlier. Finally gets that one on the right side. Bridget Dujits, blue shoes, sets up Dujits over to the box. She already has one, sets one up. Manning fires a shot and scores. Claire Manning, goal number two on this one. 20 minutes left to go here in the first. Now sets it over to Gallagher. Gallagher looking for somewhere to go. He's got Manning and Rabimbis to her right. Spinning around now, a beautiful pass for Rabimbis. Fires a shot and on the left side. Melina Rabimbis, a little bit of a dribble. Stars on that far side. Finally crossing midfield. It's Krakauer with it. Krakauer moving, fires a shot. Lembrick pushes one up and over the net. A beautiful save there from Lembrick. Sets up a corner all the way towards. Bridgeway not able to collect it, and Gallagher once again. Another good opportunity here coming from the Morris Elite. Manning up, fires a floater shot just off the right side. No signal yet, and it's a goal. Dim. As Manning working and fires one up ahead. It's got a cutting Vargas. Has one in front of her, plays it off of her head. Has Anakin to her left. Now finds Anakin. Anakin fires a shot and gets it in. Anakin off the bench. Has a goal, make it a 5-0 side. Once again, Rabimbis, no offsides call. Has Oshman to her right. Rabimbis working, turning, fires a shot and a quick two. In under two minutes, Rabimbis gets involved as well. Zero game. Now the ball sent in. Lembrick catches it through all the bodies. A great save there by Lembrick. A huge reason as to why they're up 6-0. From Dujits and one coming for Mannequin. Has Manning. Tries to set up a cutter. Has Ryan inside the box. Sets up for Vargas. Vargas pushes one just off the right side. A beautiful play there.